Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to give a little bit of education about rheumatic fever versus COVID-19. The question is, why are children at less risk of COVID-19 than adults? And that's essentially the question I'm going to try and see if I can explain to you all. If you can understand this, it will help you to have a better grasp of COVID-19. It will help you to understand how the, the disease works. In the context of medicine, there is nothing that is new. Everything is always reflected in another disease. Question is, what is the disease that most closely approximates COVID-19? And I'm going to explain to you why it's related to rheumatic fever. And this is going to help you to grasp why children aren't as, as severely affected than adults. Before I go any further, I wanted to highlight to you about this most innovative concept that we've come up with, which is a COVID-19 Foundation 360 course. In this course, we're covering a number of basic concepts that will help everyone to have a better understanding of COVID-19. We'll be looking at viruses. We'll be looking at the immune system. We'll be looking at the upper airway the autoimmune response, main symptoms, vaccines and overview, and long COVID. And the principle is quite simple, is that by educating you and giving you a better understanding of COVID-19, it makes you more prepared for the future. Because COVID-19 looks as though it's going to stay. So, as we go on with regards to our question about rheumatic fever versus COVID-19, I'm going to play a short doodly video that will help you hopefully to get a better idea of the concept. So here we go with regards to this doodly video and then I'll explain in sections about it. feeling that's not playing as clearly as I wanted to and uh, that's a little bit of a problem I tell you what I'll do is that I will use a different system to get that out because that's a very very important concept with regards to rheumatic fever versus COVID-19 the it, it's so important to grasp this concept with regards to rheumatic fever is that um I think that I will show it to you in a different screen. So let's try and see if we can do that again. Um, I'm going to share with you quickly another screen and make sure you can see it. Here we go. Let's try this. Thank you. 
Great. That's the basic principle with regards to rheumatic fever. And um, sorry with regards to Mary that you actually had rheumatic fever as a child. And it can do quite a lot of damage to some people, some children. So here are a few simple concepts that I want you to be able to get. If you get these principles, it will help you to understand COVID-19. The first interesting thing is that rheumatic fever only ever occurs in children and adolescents up to the age of 21 years. In effect, what you will find is that rheumatic fever never happens in adults. That's a really, really remarkable thing. Why would it not happen in adults? Because it is caused by a specific bacterial throat infection, group A beta hemolytic strep, and this infection can happen in adults. So why would it be that rheumatic fever would only happen in children and not in adults? So that then leads us to an important principle. As we said, rheumatic fever is the most common cause of heart disease in the developing world. And people in the first world oftentimes forget about it because it doesn't happen because of early treatment and the fact that we have less congested locations where the disease can spread. So how is it connected to COVID-19? The connection is simple. In both rheumatic fever and COVID-19, the immune system is attacking the body. That's what we call autoimmunity. Now, how do we apply that principle from rheumatic fever to COVID-19? Well, on the surface of the bacteria, right on the top of the bacteria, there is a protein that is very similar to a normal protein that occurs in children, and it's called manose binding lectin. So if you can imagine the immune system picks up the bacteria and has this protein there, and it then makes antibodies against it, there is the potential that it could also attack this particular protein that exists around the body, and that would cause an autoimmune response. Now, why is mannose binding lectin only elevated in children? Largely because they've got growing bones. And at the age of 21, children, um, at least all usually boys, have finished growing by the age of 21, girls a bit earlier. And therefore, they wouldn't have elevated levels of mannose binding lectin in their bloodstream. So in a small number, less than 3% of children, 
the body recognizes this normal protein as foreign, and so you can get an autoimmune response. And that's the basic principle with rheumatic fever. You get joint involvement with arthritis. You can get heart involvement, as uh, Mary had just said, with valve disease. You can get brain involvement. This tends to occur mostly in girls, Korea. And you can have skin involvement with skin lesions. And this is the basis of rheumatic fever. So in effect, the question then is, in children, there are elevated levels of mannose binding lectin, and in adults, there are elevated levels of serum ACE2. Now, that's a very important point, and one that I can only clarify the importance of it. But in such a short video like what I'm doing now, I'm not going to go into the details of serum ACE2 because it's very difficult to get the concept across in a very short period of time. What I'd encourage you to do is that I want you to join me with regards to joining me on the Foundation 360 course. If you can join the Foundation 360 course with us, that's how I can give you basic principles about COVID-19 that would help you to understand autoimmunity in the disease and how it relates to other viral and bacterial infections. So the principle for today is simply that rheumatic fever is probably the best and the most close approximation of the full disease of COVID-19, because in both conditions, you get an autoimmune response, one primarily affecting children, that's rheumatic fever, and the other affecting adults. So join us, see if you can get a better understanding of COVID-19, and hopefully it will help us all to get a better understanding as to where things will go in the future. Have a great evening.